143. Compare the atomic and molecular orbital diagrams to identify the member of each of the following pairs that has the highest first ionization energy, the most tightly bound electron in the gas phase. And then we have to decide whether carbon or the molecule C2 will have the first ionization energy. Now, here I already laid out the framework for the atomic orbitals and the molecular orbitals for C and C2. Now, just know that all of the orbitals that flank the sides of this mess, we'll say, those are your atomic orbitals. So I have my atomic orbital on the left, and I have my atomic orbital on the right, and right in the middle with all of this jazz is the molecular orbital. So I'll put that there. And atomic just means that you're just talking about the atoms, right? So in here, the atom is just going to be the carbon. So we have carbon on this side and a carbon on this side. And then when they come together, they form the molecule, hence the word molecular. And the molecule here would be C2. Now, the hardest part here is to just know how many total valence electrons, because once you know the valence electrons, you can plug in your electrons into this uh, diagram. So we look on the periodic table. Carbon is in group 4A or 14, which means that it has four valence electrons. So I'm just going to put valence E, and that's for each carbon. So... When we plug in those electrons, remember, we always got to start from the bottom and go up from there, right? Started from the bottom, now we're here. But anyway, so I'm going to have to put four valence electrons in the atomic orbital. So let's go for it. I got to start here. So I have one electron. I draw just a one up arrow. And now I have to fill this orbital before I can get to the tops. So I'll say two. And remember, each line can only have a max of two electrons. So here's two, three, and then four. Remember, kids on the school bus, you got to be fair. You can't just double up on here. You got to spread them out first before you double up. And then the same thing on the other side, right? Two electrons here, three, four. And now I'm just going to take note as to where in energy is the highest uh, atomic orbital. And it's these guys right here. So it's going to be right roughly around here, right? Would you say? I, I guess so. That's good. So I'll star that up. Now we're going to do the same for C2. And the, the idea here is that however many you have on the sides has to equal the molecules valence electrons. So since you have four on the sides, four plus four is a total of eight electrons. So I need to put eight in the middle. And the same exact thing, you gotta start from the bottom. So let's go for it. One, I gotta fill this one before I go to the next one. So that's two electrons already. Three, four, halfway there. Now these two orbitals have the same energy. So I have to play fair. So we have four, five, six, and now I just double back. Seven, eight. I have no more, right? Because I only had a total of eight. And this is the highest occupied orbital. So I'm just going to mark that energy is somewhere over here. Okay. So now we can answer the question. We want to know whether C or C2 has the highest first ionization energy. And remember, an ionization energy is always the energy needed to lose an electron. So you're always plucking one off, whether you're plucking one off from your atom, goodbye, or you're plucking one off from your molecule. Now just know that always, if you're talking about a first ionization energy, you're plucking off the first electron, the one that's the most outer from the nucleus. But now if we want in terms of the highest energy. If something requires a lot of energy, that means that it's really hard to do. Right? If, if just, you know, something in everyday life, you know, if it takes a really, really, uh, you know, a, a lot of energy to do, it's, it's, it's hard, right? Hard to do. So 
In this case, we're basically trying to find the one, whether it's the atom or the molecule, that when you're removing the one electron, it's really, really, really hard to do. And that is coming by based off of stability. Now, in this case, we're increasing energy. And this means that since these electrons are higher up, the C versus the C2, this would be less stable. So the higher up you are, the less stable your atom or your molecule is. If your molecule has a lower amount of energy, you're more stable. And if you're stable, chances are you're going to have to fight to get rid of that electron. So if you're trying to find the highest first ionization energy, you're going for the one that's the most stable. The least stable one is like, eh, whatever. I can lose an electron. That's fine with me. But the more stable ones are like, I don't want to lose that electron. So you're going to have to fight. You're going to have to get a lot of energy for me to get rid of that one electron. So in this case, the one that has the highest first ionization energy is C2. And that is the final answer. Box it off. Let's make it pretty. And there you go. So what'd you think? I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel. And I will be talking to you in later lessons. Good luck on your tests and quizzes. I'm rooting for you guys, all right? Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.